Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. So in today's video, we'll continue to talk about for loop, talking about how we can iterate through various different Python iterable data types, including list, tuple, dictionary, set, and string. So let's get into this. So in our previous video, we talked about the basics of iteration using for loop, and I show you the example using the list data type. So let's try to recap that real quick and start with the list data type once again. So let's first create a list one, and then we can say, one, two, three, triple A and triple B here. And then we can use the default Python for loop syntax that we have learned. So we can do for element in list one, and then we can just print the element out like this. So this first method, we are not using the indexes, but instead we are just using the default Python for loop syntax where we just loop through the list one from the beginning, which is the element of one up until the element of triple B, and we are just printing the element out. So if I run this, then you will see a 1, 2, 3, triple A and triple B. Basically, all the elements in the list 1 printed out line by line because the print statement is running 5 times within this for loop. And then the second method that we have learned is to use the indexes generated by the range function. So we can create another for loop below here. So for index in range, and then we can put len list 1 as the argument. So what we are doing here is that we are using the range function, and we are printing the len list 1 as the argument. So the land list one counts number of elements that we have in the list one. So the land list one will be five. And if we put the five inside the range function, it's going to start from index of zero up until the index of four because the sub index is exclusive, meaning the five is exclusive. So then at this point, what we can do is that we can just use the indexes that we generated from the range function uh, to use the list indexing to print out all the elements in the list one. So what I can do here is that I can just write a print statement and then refer the list one and then use the square bracket method and then pass the index like this. So if I run this one more time, then you will see the exactly same result, one, two, three, triple A and triple B once again, but this time we are using the indexes to actually print out all the elements rather than using the Python default for loop behavior. Okay, so then now let's move on to how we can iterate through the tuple data type. So the iteration in tuple data type is exactly identical as the list data type. And the reason being is that both tuple and list utilize the same indexing rules that we have learned. So let me first create a simple tuple data type here. So I can do tuple one and just pass the same element as is, but within the parentheses here. So let me just copy the elements here and then just paste it here. So now we have the tuple one set up. So it basically follows the same syntax. So I can do for element in tuple one and then just try to print the element out. Element. Uh, let me first comment this so that we don't actually see the two result here. And so if I just run this, then you will see the one, two, three, triple A and triple B. All the elements in the tuple one print the outline by line, just like the list. And then we can also use the indexes. So we can do for index in range, and then I'm gonna say len tuple one. So this time the only difference is that instead of passing the list one, I'm passing the tuple one inside this len function to actually get the total number of elements that I have in the tuple one, which is identical to the list one. And then I can do print tuple one. So I'm referring to the tuple one and then square bracket method, pass the index. And if I run this one more time, then you will see the one, two, three, triple A and triple B coming out once again, just like the above for loop that we had. Okay, then now let's move on to the next iterable data type, which is string. So the string works exactly identical to the list and tuple, meaning we can iterate through the string using the both the indexes and without the indexes. So let me first create the string data type here. So I can do string one and then say do programming. And then we can use the same syntax that we've been using. So I can do for character in string one. So in here, you can use the whatever name that you want for the variable inside the for loop. But I like to call this as a character for the string data type because we will be actually looping through each character by character within this quotation marks that we have. So same thing, I can do a print character here. And if I run this, then you will see all the characters printed out line by line, starting from the do, do, space, up until the programming and it ends at the character G here, which is this. So you might see a slight difference here in that when you loop through a string, you are actually iterating through each character by character 
rather than looking through the each element by element that you used to see in the list and tuple. And this is totally expected because a string data type is always surrounded by the quotations and we are just looping through all the characters within that quotation marks. So in this case, it makes sense for us to actually call this variable as character rather than element because we are indeed iterating through the character by character within the quotation marks that we have within the string one variable. And we can also generate the same result using the indexes. So I can just do a full index in range and then len string one. And then just print the string one square bracket index. So the second method is basically exactly identical to the list and tuple. So the only difference here is that we are passing the string one inside its ram function as the argument. And in the print statement, we are referring to the string one and passing the indexes using the square bracket method. So if I run this one more time, uh, then you will see the exactly identical result. So uh, do, okay, search from do here, do space programming and it ends at the character g here. Okay, then now let's talk about how we can iterate through the dictionary data type. So the iteration for dictionary data type is a bit different than tuple or list or string because as we learned, each element in dictionary data type utilizes a special format consists of key and value and dictionary is unordered, meaning we cannot utilize the indexes, which is the position of the element. So let's take a look into this by creating a dictionary data type. So I can do dict1 and call it braces. The first element has a key of name and value of Danny. And then the second element has a key of programming language and then the value of Python and apply the line break here. And then the third element has a key of channel name and then the value of do programming. So let me first iterate through the dict1 with the same syntax that we've used for the list tuple and string. So I can do full element in dict1 and then just print the element out. So if I run this, it will only print out the keys in the dict1 variable, not the values. And this is expected because dictionary utilizes the key as a main mechanism to search the element composed of the key and value format. So let me run this. Then you will see our three keys listed out here, name, programming language, and channel name. So as you see, it only prints out the keys for each element that we have in the dict1. So then what's gonna happen if I try to use the range function just like before and pass the indexes? So let's take a look into that. So I can do a full index in range and then put len dict1, same thing as before. And then I can do print dict1 square bracket and pass the index. And obviously this is a wrong approach here because the dictionary by default when you use the square bracket method, you have to specify the key, not the index. But the key here, we have a name, programming language, and channel name. But in this case, we are actually passing in the index, which is the integer value. And that index does not really exist in the dict1. So if I run this as is, then you will see a key error saying zero. So what happened here is that the first iteration, this range function generated the index of zero, and it was passed to this uh, square bracket method. But since we are actually using the square bracket method in the dictionary data type, and we pass the zero, it's gonna actually try to find the key of zero in the dict1, which does not exist. And that's why it's actually throwing a key error, zero. So then now let's learn about some of the useful dictionary methods that we can utilize to loop through the dictionary data type more properly. So the first method is items. So this items method allows us to print out both the key and value of the older elements in dict1 together, which can be pretty useful when you need both the key and value to implement your logic within the for loop. So I can do for, key comma value in dict one dot item colon and then I can just print key and value and if I print this out then you see the name which is the key and value Danny printed out in a single line right next to each other for all the elements that we have in the dict one. So one thing to note here is that instead of passing the one variable like index or element, I'm actually passing the two variables, key and value. And I can only do this because I'm actually calling the items method on the dictionary data type. So what this allows us is that it actually extracts out both the key and value uh, within this dict one variable that I have. And it allows us to actually print out each variable right next to each other using the print statement within the for loop. And we can also achieve the same result by just using the default for loop syntax. So what I can do here is that I can create another for loop for key in dict1. So as you see, I'm not actually calling any method here. So that's why I'm having a one variable, which is a key. And then what I can do is print key 
And for the value, what I can do is I can just refer the dict one that we have and use the square bracket method and pass the key. So in this case, what we are doing here is that I want to actually retrieve the value for the given key within this for loop. So what this will generate is that it will generate the same result as what we have above, which is the key and value, because the dict one square bracket key is literally the same thing as us retrieving the value for the given element in the dict one. So if I run this one more time, then you will see the two exactly identical result, the name, which is the key, and then the value, programming language, which is the key, and value is Python. Okay, so then now let's move on to the keys method. So keys, so this method allows us to extract all the keys within dict one. So what I can do here is I can do a full key in dict one dot keys. So I'm calling the keys method on the dictionary class colon, and then I can just print key out. And if I run this, then you will see the name, programming language, and channel name. Basically, all the keys for all the elements that we have in the dict one. And this is actually the same thing as us just using the default syntax. So I can just do for key in dict one, and then print the key out one more time. And if I run this once again, then you will see the two exactly identical set of result. So the name, programming language, channel name, and in the bottom, which is coming from this print statement, name, programming language, and channel name. Okay, so then now let's talk about the values method. So I can do values and then allows us to extract all the values within the dict1. So same thing, so for value in dict1.values, I can just print the value out, so print value and run it. Then you will see the Danny Python do programming. So all the values that we have in the dict1 without the keys. And so this is actually the same thing as us actually doing full key in dict1 and then print uh, dict1. So wrapper the dict1 first and then use the square bracket method and pass the key into the square bracket and run it one more time. Then you will see the same set of results as well. The Danny Python do programming coming from the last print statement that we have within the last for loop. Okay, so then now let's talk about how we can iterate through the set data type. So I have our set one created for you with a one of the duplicate element triple one, and I have some strings and integers. So I can just use the default uh, for loop syntax. So for element in set one colon and print element. So if I run this, what's gonna happen is that the duplicate elements that we have will be gone because that is the default behavior of the set data type and it will be unordered. So let me just run this. Then you will see uh, only one set of word triple one here. And if I just run this one more time, then you will obviously see a different order coming out because the set data type, every time I run this, it gets reinstantiated. And this approach of iterating through the set data type works because we just iterate through all the elements without the duplicates. But if you want to have a better control of the looping, we can also use the indexing by converting the set data type into the list data type first. So what we're gonna do here is that the first step, convert set to list, and then loop through the list. Okay, so for the step number one, what we can do is that we can say uh, list one, because now it's gonna be a list after conversion. Set it equal to list, and then put the set one as the argument. So in here, I'm using the built-in function list and passing the set one as the argument to convert this set to a list data type. And uh, everything else should be exactly identical. So for index in range, and then len list one colon, and then we can do print and then refer to the list one now, list one square bracket method, and then pass the index. So if I just run this one more time, then you will see all the elements printed out once again, coming out from the second for loop that we have here. So please note that even if I make a conversion like this, meaning from set to a list data type, the elements in the list one will still not allow any duplicate values and it will be unordered. Because this set data type is obviously being instantiated every time I run the script here. So that's why even if you make the conversion to a list data type, the set actually starts from the line 69 here. So that's why it follows the older characteristics of the set data type before it actually gets converted into the list and then being looped through in the line 80 and line 79.
Okay, so the last topic that we're going to talk about in today's video is enumerate. So the enumerate function provides us with the index variable as well as the element within the same for loop. So let me show you an example here. So for index comma element in enumerate and then pass the iterable which is the list one colon and then print index comma element. So if I run this, then you will see all the elements with the indexes starting from zero to the end of index which is a four in the case of list one so you can see index and element index element index element right next to each other until the last element is reached which is the triple b so this is basically same thing as us doing this so for index in uh, range len list one and then i can just print the index out first and then put the use the square bracket method so list one square bracket index and let me also put some divider here so print some uh, equal sign and if i run this one more time then for the first for loop you will see the indexes as well as the elements right next to each other and there is a divider and if we go to the second for loop which is this one using the range and lamp function we actually see the exactly identical result with all the indexes and element together and since we actually utilize the enumerate function in the indexable data type such as list string and tuple we actually use the index that's generated from the enumerate function as the index that we use in the square bracket method as you see in the second for loop here so the range function generates an index and we use the index generated from the range function to actually use the square bracket method to retrieve the element while in the enumerate method it actually provides us the access to both the index and element at the same time so that we can actually have access to both the index and element within the same for loop without using the square bracket method so that you might ask hey then which method should i be utilizing to loop through the the list data type with the indexes it really depends on your preference but in my opinion using the enumerate function is being more pythonic way because you don't have to use the square bracket method to retrieve the actual element using the indexes generated from the range function. Instead, you have both the indexes and elements explicitly inside the for loop right up front so that you can just utilize them inside the for loop based on your logic. But this doesn't mean that having the understanding to manipulate the indexes like this using the range function is unnecessary. A lot of the tech interviews still ask you to come up with your own algorithm that requires you to have the full understanding of manipulating the indexes using the range function or your own custom iterator. So it's always good to have wide range of knowledge about how the indexes can be generated and controlled within the for loop. And the one last thing that I want to mention about the enumerate function is that the enumerate function takes all iterable data types. So that means that uh, we can also pass in the dictionary data type as the argument for the enumerate function even though the dictionary data type is not indexable. Uh, so in that case, we can actually use the index that is generated from the enumerate function as the counter rather than index. So let me show you a quick example of that. So let me just copy and paste the dict1 here. And then I can just change the list1 to a dict1. So now we have an index element in enumerate dict1 and then we are printing out the index and element. So in this case, uh, it makes more sense for me to actually change the index to count and just pass the count to here as well. And let me just comment the second for loop. Uh, and if I just run this, then you reach the 0, 1, 2, which is a count of the iteration that is happening within the for loop. So the first iteration, which has the count of 0, has a key of name. And then the second iteration, which has the count of 1, has the value of programming language. So if you want to actually make this a true counter, then we can actually make this 0 to start with 1. So if you want to actually make this count start from 1 instead of 0, then we can also pass the optional argument in the enumerate function as the second argument and just specify the one here as the starting uh, count and then just run this one more time then you will see uh, the first iteration which is one it has a key of name the second iteration has a key of programming language and so on okay guys that's it for this video we've talked about how we can use the for loop in iterable data types such as list tuple string set and dictionary in our next video we'll be talking about utilizing and understanding the nested for loop and nested data types so please stay tuned and if you haven't subscribed already please click the subscribe and like button thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next videos